Well, hello everybody and welcome back. So in the previous clip, we said that in this clip, we're going to be talking about material presets because material presets are an awesome new addition to your material creation workflow. They're going to make creating your materials easier and faster. Now, as we explore what material presets do, you know, we're also going to get acquainted with the physical material um, here for the first time, okay? Now, we won't go too much into the detail about all the different parameters and stuff in the, in the new physical material, but, you know, we're going to get our feet wet a little bit, all right? Okay, so, you know, um, to start things off here, we're going to need to create our very first Corona physical material. Now, to do that, we need to locate the material manager, right? And then find the Corona menu, click on it, and in here, you're going to see that you have this physical material button. You know, again, click on it, bam, you have created your very first Corona physical material. Now, we'll be using the Corona Node editor here to uh, edit our material. So let's just drag this newly created physical material into the Node editor, drop it in here, okay? Now let's also make sure that we see uh, the material properties window here by clicking on this button, just in case you have it hidden by uh, default. All right, okay, so now at this point, uh, there's one thing that we wanna mention, and that is the fact that if, if you're just not used to using the physical material just yet, or maybe you're mid-production and you need to rely on you know the already established workflows with the legacy material, well, no worries. In that case, we got you covered. If you go under the Corona menu in the material manager here, you know we have the legacy material still available for you to use. So you, you bring it in like you always did, you know, and the material is going to look exactly as it did before, with one notable exception or change, if you will. Now it's called the Corona Legacy material, whereas previously it was called the, just the Corona material. Everything else with regards to the Corona Legacy material stayed the same. All right. Now, obviously, we would like to encourage you to use the physical material. It is the better material. It enables you to create uh, better looking materials, more realistic materials, and it's easier to use. But, you know, if you still need to rely on the previous workflows, on the previous material, well then, you know, it's there for you and you can use it. All right, but this tutorial, obviously it's gonna be all about the physical material. So let's delete the legacy material that we just created and let's focus on the physical material right here. All right, all right. So material presets, right? If we go under the general menu, category, tab, whatever you wanna call it here, you're going to see that you have this apply preset dropdown. If you expand it, you're going to see that you can choose between a lot of different material types here. Okay. So you got different kinds of metal materials, right? Aluminum, brass, chrome, you got all kinds of different glass materials, uh, you know, more, more metals, plastics, you know, and so on and so forth. Now, material presets are really cool because they can make the material creation process a lot easier on you. Let's show you how. So, Let's say you wanted to create a basic glass material, okay? Well then, in that case, you would select the glass preset, right? And bam, check this out. Our material here that we created is now looking like a glass material would look like, right? So we didn't have to go in and mess with any of the parameters because the preset already did that for us. And that's exactly what these presets do, okay? They, uh, they changed all of the materials parameters accordingly to the preset that you've selected, all right? So uh, for example, the IOR value might change, the roughness value might change, the color value might change, okay? Uh, you know, you might have refraction enabled and so on and so forth. So that's what the presets do. They go in and they adjust, or better yet, they preset uh, your materials parameters, okay? And that's a pretty important thing to note because uh, what's the difference between, uh, you know, uh, these presets and the material uh, library materials? Well, the material library materials, so uh, these guys right here, right? Well, these are your fully fleshed out materials. You know, you drag them into your node editor, into your scene, right? And they're already going to be your finalized finished materials. They're going to have, um, uh, you know, uh, imperfection maps. They're going to have bumps and bruises. All of that's already going to be implemented and uh, taken care of, right? But, you know, uh, material presets won't do that for you. Material presets are just going to come in here into uh, the parameters of your materials, and they're just going to tweak them accordingly to the preset that you've selected. All right. So right now, 
uh, we selected a glass preset. Now, if we were to switch to say a uh, plastic polymeride nylon preset, okay, if we were to do that, you're going to see that, well, now um, we have uh, different values for the IOR, right? We have a different color here. And then we also have some subsurface scattering that got enabled all of a sudden, right? But as you'll notice, no maps, right? Um, uh, no shaders, nothing like that gets, gets thrown in here. It's just, you know, presetting this whole material to behave <laughs> like a plastic polymerite nylon material would behave. Now, obviously at this point, what you want to do is uh, you want to tweak it, right? I mean, unless you're perfectly happy with the way that it came in, but obviously, typically you want to add some imperfection maps. You want to tweak these parameters just a little bit to better suit the exact material you're going for, right? And so that's the main difference between the presets and the Corona material library materials here. You know, these are your uh, fully fleshed out materials and these are sort of your presets, just the parameters are going to be preset. Right, but you can probably already imagine how useful the presets can be because, okay, so now if I wanted to create a glass material, I would have to change the IOR value, uh, play with the roughness value, and don't worry about some of these, you know, um, parameters here. We're going to explain what they do uh, in the upcoming clips, you know, but for now, just it's just important to know that, you know, you would have to go in here and tweak these parameters to get the glass look, or, you know, what you could do is you could just go into the preset, apply a glass preset, Bam, already done, right? Now we, all you need to do is are, are just some minor tweaks, essentially. All right, cool. So now that we know what material presets are and how they work, uh, let's start populating our scene here, okay? So we're going to be creating a glass material for our little snow globe here, all right? So uh, we're already using a glass preset for our physical material here. Let's just name it properly, okay? Let's call it glass. And then let's apply it onto the glass object. All right. And as you can see, just be doing that, you know, ta-da, we have created our very first glass material here. Now we could still tweak it, right? So what we'll do here is we're going to tweak the IOR. We've maybe it's just a little bit too high. So maybe we can tweak it to 1.4 or something like that. Right. And you know, you can see that now, you know, the preset here was just a shortcut in, uh, to getting this. Uh, glass material going, and now we can, you know, go in and further tweak it if if we so wanted to, of course. Now, one thing that you might have noticed here is that once we've changed one of the parameters in our material, could be any one of these parameters, or you know, um, in 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 any of the channels, you'll notice that the apply preset drop down here is not going to list the preset that we are using anymore. Okay, so as you can see, this field is now blank. All right, so what, what the heck is happening here, right? Well, you know, we, we've applied a glass preset. That was our starting point, but then we went in and we tweaked it. We changed the IOR value, value in this case. <laughs> All right, and once we've done that, you know, we're not using that same exact glass preset anymore. Yes, we used it as a base, but then we changed it because we changed one of the parameters. And so this apply preset field here is now going to be blank, All right, because uh, if it was still say that we're using the glass preset, that would be a bit incorrect because we did end up changing that glass, glass preset by changing the IOR value here, right? So that's uh, that's why this field uh, will go blank on you. It's going to communicate that, yes, you might have been using a preset, but you've changed it, all right? Right, now at this point, you know, no worries, you can still change to a different uh, preset, all right? And the way you do that, is simply by, again, just bringing up the drop down menu here and so you can select a different preset, you know? So let's go with a frosted glass preset here. But when you hit it, when you, when you select it, this dialog window is going to pop up, okay? And the dialog window is going to say that selecting a preset will likely overwrite some of the changes made to the constant material properties. And it's going to ask you really nicely if you wish to continue. All right, now if you hit no, you know, and nothing's going to happen. Uh, none of these changes are going to be applied. So um, the preset's not going to be applied. But if you hit yes, well, then now you're applying the glass frosted preset. But if you go back and check the IOR parameter, you're going to see that it's going to be, well, um, essentially set to a different va value than the one that we've set it to. 
Okay, because if you'll remember, we've used the value of 1.4 for the IOR. But now that we've applied a different preset, it was set to whatever was set in that preset, right? And that's what that uh, dialog box was all about. So um, it basically t told us that we've changed some of the parameters. And if we apply a different preset, some of those parameters that we've changed might get overwritten. In our case, this was the IOR parameter, right? Right. Now, there's one important note uh, to be made here, and that is that, uh, you know, parameters do get overwritten, but maps or shaders won't. Okay. So if we bring in some sort of a, um, well, let's bring in an imperfection map. Um, math. Uh, yeah, math. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and then let's just plug it randomly into one of the slots here. Let's just plug it into the bump slot. Okay. Um, and then let's also enable the bump slot. There we go. And um, if we now, for example, uh, change to a different preset, right? So let's go back to glass. Again, this window is going to pop up. Yes, we want to apply the glass preset. Yes, some of the parameters might get overwritten, but you know, the plugged in map, the plugged in shader is going to stay plugged in. All right. So if we were to plug it, uh, say, for example, into the roughness slot here, okay. Uh, and if we tweak the roughness parameter here just a little bit, you know, so we set it to what, to 40%. Um, and if we now switch to another preset, again, dialog, hit yes. And again, you're going to be able to see uh, that anything shader related is going to stay plugged in. Okay. Although that said, the value of the set parameter to where the bitmap is plugged into or a shader is plugged into, that value will change. All right. So the map will stay, but the value will change. All right. Okay. Now, um, this bitmap kind of not doing it for us here. This is making the whole material look a bit dirty, which is a pretty cool look, but not exactly what we're going for here. So let's just, uh, delete, uh, this, uh, bitmap there. And then again, let's just apply that basic glass material and then let's make some changes to its IOR. All right. Okay, cool. So we've created our very first material here. And uh, now let's, uh, let's press forward and let's create another material. Okay, so let's move this one out of the way. Let's bring in a new chronophysical material. Let's uh, drag it onto our node material editor canvas here. And this material is actually going to be uh, this plastic cup material here. All right. Okay, so um, let's first apply it to the relevant objects. All right. And now let's, uh, again, help ourselves out with some presets. So let's go under the preset dropdown menu he here and let's select the, well, it's going to be a plastic cup. So let's select maybe the plastic PVC opaque preset. All right. And there we go. It's already looking like a plastic, like a basic plastic PVC material, right? Now, could we make changes to it? Why? Absolutely. Yes, uh, we could. So how about we make this material uh, red? Okay. So let's just drop its value here for just, just a little bit. And there we go. All right. We kind of customized that plastic PVC uh, preset, essentially. Again, the field will go blank here, the apply preset field, just because, you know, we've taken that preset, but we've changed it, right? We've changed its color, one of its parameters, essentially. And so, you know, we're not using that exact same preset anymore, right? Right. Okay. So what could we still do with our material here? Well, you know, the usual stuff. Now that we've applied the preset, we customized the preset a little bit, and now we could start adding uh, even more details to it. Okay. So we, what we could do is we could bring in a bit of an imperfection map, right? We could plug it into say the roughness slot and don't worry, we'll go over what the roughness slot does in uh, the upcoming clips, you know, but at this point, you know, what you could start doing is you could start adding details to your, uh, to your materials. And uh, as a small workflow tip, you know, what I typically do when I start adding these imperfections in is I actually go into my render settings under the performance settings menu. And in here I disable the fast preview denoiser. Okay. That's just a personal preference. Uh, just because yes, you know, the image is going to look a bit noisier now, but the details are not going to be so heavily denoised. All right. So that's what I like to do. And, um, you know, hopefully now you can see just how, uh, how you can uh, continue working on this material, right? So you can start tweaking the IOR parameter, 
right? You could start messing with the roughness parameter, uh, tweak the color, add more imperfection maps, more shaders, whatever the case may be, right? Bottom line, hopefully you kind of see the power of the presets here. So, you know, you can use the preset as a sort of a starting point, or, you know, if you're happy with the way that it looks, you can just select a preset and be done with it. But typically, you know, you can use it as a starting point. So for example, if you're creating a plastic material, you could create, you could use the plastic PVC preset, you know, you could customize it and then you can start adding imperfections to it. All right. All right. Now, before we uh, conclude this uh, video here, there's just one more tip that we want to uh, talk about. And that is, if you go under the presets menu here, you're going to see that at the very top of the list here, you have the default preset. All right. If you select it and hit OK to apply the changes, right? If you select it, you're going to see that now all of the parameters in here are going to be reset to be, uh, well, to be exactly the same as they are whenever you bring in a new Corona physical material, right? Now, because we have used um, a shader here, a bitmap shader in our material, we plugged it in. You know, that one stays plugged in still, right? Even though we've applied a preset. We talked about that earlier. But, you know, uh, the cool thing here is that if you're working on a material and you're just kind of feel like, I want to start over, well, you don't need to bring in a new Corona physical material. You can just go into the preset drop down here, select the default preset, you know, and all of these parameters in here are basically going to be reset for you. All right. Okay. So that pretty much concludes this clip. Material presets can be incredibly useful for beginner users, as well as all of you that have years of experience creating materials. For beginners, they'll speed up the material creation process and they'll give you really solid guidelines for creating materials. For all of you seasoned folks, well, you won't have to input the same parameters over and over again because presets will pre-populate those for you. And so you can go straight into adding details to your materials because the presets will already provide a good base for you, right? Right. Okay, so thank you for tuning into this one. And in the next one, we'll be creating our very first wood material without using presets, so from scratch. So that's some exciting stuff that's upcoming. And so we'll see you there.